naming organic molecules. Um, the terms uh, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, um, hydrocarbon, all of those are terms that you need to become familiar with, and I'm going to go through what they all mean. So uh, a hydrocarbon is exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to just write that here. Hydro, whoops, not hydrogen. <laughs> hydrocarbon, and it's exactly what it sounds like, a hydrogen and carbon chain. So when you go to like name and write these hydrocarbons, there's different, um, I guess, like types you can come up with. So an alkane means that they have all single bonds. The A-N-E ending means all single bonds. But you do this procedure, whether it's single bonds, double bonds, or triple bonds. So first thing you're going to do is identify your longest carbon chain. Um, second thing you're going to do is ask yourself, are there double or triple bonds? Because that's when you'll change the ending. Um, then you ask, are there groups on any of those interior carbons? We call those branches. So like, are there branches coming off of that longest chain? And then we number the molecule given these branches or giving the double or triple bonds like the smallest number. The most important thing to remember is that carbons make four bonds. It always has to make four bonds. So the hydrogens kind of just, we put as many on there as we need to make sure that every carbon is making four bonds. This is the formula for alkanes. Like if I told you you had um, six carbons, you would say C6 and you would say H. And then using this formula up here, um, two times six is 12 plus two is 14. So that is an alkane. Now if it's an alkene or an alkyne, this formula changes. But for an alkane, that formula works. Um, here's an example of alkanes. Um, how we the remember the first thing was to like identify the longest carbon chain. That's because we need to identify what the name is going to be. So if you have the prefix meth, so that's what you see here, meth, it's one carbon, and it looks like this. It, eth is two carbons, and prop is three, but is four, pent is five, hex is six. Hept is seven, oct is eight, known is nine, and dec is ten. So those are um, the ten that you guys need to memorize, and it's just telling you how many carbons. So meth is one, eth is two, prop is three, four, but is four, pent is five, hex is six, hept is seven, oct is eight, known is nine, and dec is ten. So I'm going to show you how to use those. Um, okay, so if I have a single, if they're all single bonds, notice in this first example, they're all single bonds between the carbons. The hydrogens don't matter, but between the carbons, if I'm looking at the carbons, they have all single bonds. And I circuit, circled my longest chain there. So my longest chain has four carbons. So if I go back and look at four, that is but. So I'm going to name it but. And then because they're all singly bonded, I end it with the ending ane. So butane is the name of that compound. Now on my next one, I look at my longest carbon chain and I see that it's but again, because it's four carbons again, but this time there's a double bond in there. So I have to make the ending ene. And then one of my other rules was you have to number it. So you don't have to do that with butane because there's no double triple bonds, there's no branches, nothing like that. But on this one, there is a double bond. So we have to say where that is. So I'm going to number it so my double bond has the smallest number. So I'm going to number it this direction. One, two, three, four. That means that that double bond is on the first carbon. So I'm going to put one butene. Sometimes you see it written as one butene. Either way is appropriate. Um, I prefer like this top way, but you can write it this bottom way as well. Uh, the last one, I'm going to circle my longest carbon chain. This time I only have two carbons. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to look at two. That's eth. So E-T-H, eth. And because I have a triple bond this time, it's Y-N-E. So normally I would have to say like which carbon is it on, but there's only two carbons. So it's one, two, or it's one, two. Regardless, it's on the first carbon, no matter which direction you start counting. So um, I don't need to write the number because it's on the same carbon no matter which way you go. 
so here um, are some more examples. So what happens if we add a substituent? That is the same as a branch. So what happens when we add a branch? So I'm still gonna look for my longest carbon chain. So I'm just gonna go with this one. You could choose to go with this one. Um, you could choose to go with um, this one. That's about it. This is technically a shorthand. There is a carbon here, so technically I have four carbons total, but I can only draw a straight line between three of them. There's no way for me to go from like one carbon to this one, to this one, and then to this one. There's no bond there. You can't like retrace the bond. I can't go backwards. So my longest chain, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one just cause it's already circled, which makes that this is a branch. So my longest carbon chain has one, two, three carbons in it. So that means my name is gonna be Prope. And then they're all singly bonded, so it ends in ane. So propane is my longest chain. And then this group here, I have one carbon. When there's nothing written, it means one. So if I go back and look at my one carbon, the prefix is meth. And we always end branches with YL. So that's what you see up here. We always end branches with YL. So methyl propane is the name. Uh, you might see it as two methyl um, propane because this methane group is on the second carbon. Um, however, it's on the second carbon no matter which way you number. If I were, if I had started with the other carbon as my like first one and gone one, two, three, it's still on the second, um, which is why there's no number in the formal name. All right, doing another one. Um, so again, I'm gonna look for my longest carbon chain. I can go straight across, that's five. Um, let's bend and see how many it is. So I could go one, two, three, four, five. So that's still five that direction. Um, I could go one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's still five. So no matter which way I go, I get five. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this one here since that's like the carbons that are closest to me. And I'm gonna number them. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Even if I went the other way and did um, did my numbering like one, two, three, four, five, it didn't change that three. So it doesn't really matter which way I number on this one. Um, I have five carbons, which if we go back, you can see that the five is pent. And then because they're all singly bonded, I'm gonna end it in A and E. And then this group here coming off has two carbons. So if I go back and look at my two carbons, oops, one too far, that's eth. And remember we end our carbon substituents in YL, so ethyl, and then it's on the third carbon. Okay, what if our substituent is not a branch? So what if, I mean, what if it's not a carbon-based branch, right? So far we've done like ethyl, methyl, um, you could have propyl, butyl, pentyl. Um, your branches are probably not again gonna get that high. You're probably not gonna have longer than like a, maybe a butyl branch. Um, but um, what if it's not a hydrocarbon? What if it is a halogen? So halogens are the last group in your periodic table. Um, you'll see, well, second to last, noble gases are the last, but halogens, this group 17. Um, we're gonna see how we name it with uh, halogens on our carbons. So every time, again, every time you have a bend, you have a carbon. So there's actually three carbons in this first one. So that's my carbon chain. Three carbons is prop. They're all single bonded. If it wasn't single bonded, there would be a second bond there. That's how you would know it was a double bond. Um, so that means they all end in ane. And then fluorine, fluorine is my, um, my halogen. So I drop the I-N-E ending and I add the O. So fluorine becomes fluoro. And uh, I put it on the first carbon, one, two, three. So first carbon, I have a fluoro and propane is my longest chain. So just doing another one, um, my longest chain right here is one, two, three, four carbons, four is bute, and they all have single bonding, so that's ane, so butane, and then I have a chlorine group, so I drop the I-N-E and I add an O, so chloro, 
and then it's on the second carbon, so the two. So two chlorobutane is the name of that compound. So what if I have multiple substituents? So again, let's remember that there's carbons here at every one of those bends. So these are chlorine, the purples are chlorines, not carbons. So I'm gonna circle my longest carbon chain and it's four carbons. I have one, two, three, four, four carbons. So that's butane. So they're all single bonded. So that's butane, but for four and then a for ane for, a, uh, for single bonds. And then I have two chloro groups. So before I just had the one chloro group, now I have two of them because I have two chlorines. So how do I say two in science? Di, so di chloro. And then I have to say um, where they are. So I have one of them that's attached to my second carbon and then one of them that's attached to my third carbon. So I, um, you, I separate those with a comma. So two, three, di chloro butane. You can also have compounds that kind of make a circle. These two are really hard to make because um, there's so many electrons in here that they sort of like push apart. So these are very unstable. But basically pentane, five carbons, and bigger, hexane, those make um, cyclical compounds. Um, those ones specifically with the single bonds are not so important. Um, this is a shorthand way to write them. You can write them like this where you're showing every single carbon. Um, but these ones are more stable. So these are the ones that like exist in real life. However, these ones are less useful. Our most useful type is um, called uh, an aromatic compound, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but the, the simplest cyclic alkane you can have is this one with three um, but again that's not stable so it won't exist so then your next one is four which again is not stable so it won't exist so pentane the cyclopentane is our um is our most common one or is our smallest one that we can make and notice it's pentane because i have one two three four five carbons so five carbons is pentane and then cyclo just means that they're all connected in a circle. In, in this case, it's specifically a pentagon, but basically they're all in a circle. So we call them cyclo and then their name. So cyclopentane, because there's five here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So cyclohexane, if you see them like this written as the shorthand, again, you're just counting the points. So one, two, three, four, five, six means hexane. And because they're all in a circle, we say cyclohexane. Um, cyclohexane is fairly common and um, we get sort of two shapes. We get this chair shape, which is what most of the molecules make, and then this boat shape, which is what very few molecules make because all of these hydrogens are like too close together. And um, because they're so close to each other, they, they're all negative, so they push away, which pushes it into this chair position. Um, you might see that question later as like how does cyclohexane mostly exist? It exists in this chair position. Um, so we call it a chair and a boat. The chair is the one that is more common. And I said this word earlier, aromatic. Aromatic means that it's a cyclo compound, but with double bonds. So this is how we show a double bond in shorthand. And it just, in those aromatic means that those double bonds move around. So see, you can he see it here, here, and here. And then on our next one, we see it here, here, and here. That's because those double bonds are moving around. They're constantly shifting places. That's why it's called aromatic, because they move. Um, the double bonds are less reactive and usually shorter. Um, However, in a cyclic compound, that's not true. So double bonds are usually shorter and they're usually more reactive, but with aromatic compounds, that's not true. Um, these double bonds tend to be unreactive. They tend to be the same length as the single bonds. Um, that's because the electrons are more evenly spread out because they're in a circle in a straight compound like this. Um, electrons have to like move back and forth. They have to pass each other. Um, whereas in a cyclical compound, they can keep going around without sort of like passing each other. That's what makes them um, more evenly distributed. Uh, you can easily add substituents onto this. So a fluorine or a chlorine 
um, we would just uh, put that fluoro or chloro prefix on the term the word benzene. So these are called benzene rings. Again, very common. Um, it's the only one I'll ask you about. I'm not going to ask you about um, like a five carbon with double bonds. I won't ask you that. I'll only ask you about benzene specifically um, because benzene is so common. It's in so many like um, skincare products. It's in so many drugs, um, like medicines, prescriptions. Um, we see it a lot. So um, that's the only reason we're really talking about it. But you can add whatever you want to it. And um, we name that just by putting it in front. So fluorobenzene, chlorobenzene, um, that sort of thing. So the last thing I want to talk about is I briefly want to go back to um, one of these pictures, this one. Um, so I only focused on the carbons when I was talking about this picture, um, which is fine. You don't really name based on hydrogens. You only name based on carbons. So if I were going to, um, if I were going to draw 3-ethyl pentane. I would draw that by saying pent. That means there's five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, ane means that they all have single bonds, so I don't have to change that. And then my I have a prefix of ethyl, so I have a two carbon chain on my third carbon. So I'm going to count in three carbons, one, two, three. And on my three carbon chain, I'm going to put another two carbon chain. So here's my ethyl group and here's my pentane chain. Now I have to go through and add hydrogens. So the hydrogens add there, like they add as many as you need in order to make every carbon have four bonds. So looking at this carbon, it's only making one bond. That means I need three hydrogens. This carbon here is already making two bonds, so I need two hydrogens. This carbon here is already making three bonds, so I only need one hydrogen. This carbon is making two, so I need two hydrogens. This carbon is making the one bond here, so I need three hydrogens. This carbon is making two bonds already, so I need two hydrogens. And this carbon is making one bond, so I need three hydrogens. Um, so that's how we know how many hydrogens to put on. We're just trying to make every carbon make um, as make four bonds. They all have to make four bonds. If I had a double bond, um, let's do, wait, where's the double bonds? Here we go. So if I had a double bond, um, like I, like, let me, I guess let me just make one up. So if I had butene, um, let's say I had one butene. Oh, that's the one we did up there. Okay, so I would say but is four carbons. And then ene is a double bond. So where is the double bond? On the first carbon. So on the first carbon, I'm going to put a double bond. So that's it. And now I've done the whole name. Now I need to add hydrogens. So this carbon is making two bonds. So it needs two hydrogens. This carbon is making three bonds. One, two, three. So I need one hydrogen. This carbon is making two bonds. So I need two hydrogens. This carbon is making one bond. So I need three hydrogens. So that's kind of the same thing that you see up here. You had the first carbon with two hydrogens, which is what you have here. Again, with that one double bond. The second carbon here only had one hydrogen because it was already making three bonds. The third carbon had two hydrogens, which were not drawn on there. <laughs> and then the fourth carbon had um, three hydrogens. So that's how we know um, how many hydrogens to put on. It's this rule that I said in the very beginning, carbon always makes four bonds. All right, so head on over to your notebook, um, get started on the practice. Let me know if you have questions.